Hello, and welcome to a digital lecture for Salt Lake Community College. This lecture will be the fourth to cover section 4.1 for Intro to Statistics, considering examining quantitative data. This video will specifically cover how to create and analyze a five number summary and its associated graphical representation, a box plot. Remember that, as defined in the previous video for section 4.1, a box plot is a graph for quantitative data that summarizes a data set using five statistics while also plotting unusual observations. Those five statistics make up what is known as the five number summary. The statistics summarize in a box plot, consisting of the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum value. We already know what the minimum, the median, and the maximum are, but the first quartile is the 25th percentile, i.e. 25% of the data fall below this value, and the third quartile is the 75th percentile, i.e. 75% of the data fall below this value. Also note that the median is sometimes known as the second quartile, since two quarters or 50% of the data fall at or below that value. If you take the difference of these aforementioned quartiles, you get the interquartile range, the total length of the box representing the middle 50% of the data. The box plot was also defined as plotting unusual observations, also known as outliers observations that are extreme relative to the rest of the data. Note that outliers, although unusual, should not typically be removed from the data set, but they should be identified and considered for their impact on various statistics calculated for that data set. The interquartile range, or IQR for short, is the length of the box in a box plot. It is computed as the difference between Q3 and Q1 where both of those are the two percentiles mentioned earlier. Around the box are what are called whiskers, lines that extend out from the box and attempt to capture the data outside the box with a reach no more than 1.5 times IQR. The restriction of 1.5 times IQR is known as the fences for that plot, the maximum reach of the whiskers in a box plot. The upper fence is calculated as Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, and the lower fence is calculated as Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. Pay careful attention that each of these use different quartiles, and the upper fence is an addition, whereas the lower fence is a subtraction. If it is the case that our minimum or maximum are beyond these fences, we will identify them as outliers and instead use the next highest value in the data set or next lowest value in the data set within the bounds of the fences. You will see an example of this momentarily. Now, why is it important for us to consider outliers? Well, they serve many useful purposes, including identifying strong skew in the distribution, either left skew or right skew, identifying data collection or entry errors, and also providing insight into interesting properties of the data. Let's look at an example on the next page that will have us calculate the five number summary and create the box plot. Here we have a number of items produced per hour. There are 13 observations listed, 24, 15, up to 26. When we're trying to find quartiles, the first thing we're going to do, just like when calculating median, is arranging the data in ascending order. And then we will calculate that median, also known as Q2. Once we have the median, we will use the median to divide the data set into two halves. Q1 is the median of the first half of the data set, and Q3 will be the median of the second half of the data set. Note on the right side here, if the number of observations is odd, do not include the median when determining Q1 and Q3 by hand, which you will see in this example. If we take those 13 values and order them appropriately, we see a list that looks like this, 7, 15, 20, up to a total maximum value of 30. When we calculate our median, which we should do first, Q2, we consider the fact that since we have 13 values in the data set, if you do 13 divided by 2, it gives you 6.5, which rounds up to about 7. About the seventh value in the data set should be the median. So we count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This 26 here, which seems to be good. 50% of the data seems above that. 50% of the data seems below that. So 26 is going to be our median. 
Q1 then is going to be the median of the first half of the data set. But remember when calculating that, do not consider the median because we have an odd number of values. We look at the first six values in the data set. We notice that the median of that first half would be split between the third value and the fourth value. If we look at the average of those two, 20 plus 22 divided by two gives us a Q1 value of 21. Same thing for Q3, we look at the second half of the data set, which has another six values. Therefore, we want to look at the third and fourth value in the second half and take the average of those two. 27 and 29 have an average of 28. When we look at the distance between Q1 and the median, as well as Q3 in the median, this can help us determine if there's going to be any skew in the data set. For the first Q1 to the median, we have 26 minus 21 has a distance of 5. And for Q3 in the median, 28 minus 26 will give us a distance of 2. Because we see a larger distance between Q1 and the median, which would be on the left side of the box plot, we thus will also say that we identify skew to the left. So yes, it is skewed. As for our five number summary, we have our minimum value is 7, Q1, Q2, and Q3 we've already calculated, and our maximum value in the data set is 30. However, with that five number summary, we also want to consider what fences we have that hopefully can identify if any outliers exist. First, when we calculate our IQR, which is going to be the difference of Q3 minus Q1, which is a distance of 7. With that, we can find our lower fence to be Q1 minus 1.5 times 7, and that gives us a total value of 10.5, as well as our upper fence, which will be Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, which overall gives us a total of 38.5. When we look at our data set, we consider to see if there are any numbers in the original data set from 7 up to 30, and see if there are any values in that data set that are beyond our fences, either less than our lower fence or above our upper fence. Our upper fence is 38.5 and our largest value is 30, so I do not see any values beyond our upper fence, so we do not see any outliers on that end. However, our lower fence is 10.5, and when we look at our lower values, we do see that 7 is beyond that. It is less than our lower fence. So therefore, we are going to say, yes, we do have outliers. Specifically, we're going to say that 7 is less than 10.5, so 7 is an outlier. With that in mind, we are going to draw the box plot. To do so, what we want to do is draw lines that represent every number from the five number summary, except for the outlier value of 7. 7 is an outlier, and we're going to represent that with a dot but every other value we're going to represent with a vertical line. In this case, 21 for our Q1, 26 for our median, 28 for our Q3, and 30 for our maximum. The box should represent just the quartiles, Q1, the median, and Q3. So we're going to connect a box with the middle three lines, and then a whisker up to that maximum value of 30. However, we still should have a lower whisker as well, but 7 was identified as an outlier. What we are going to choose, because our lower fence was 10.5, around there, we're going to choose the next highest value in the data set, or the next appropriate value in the data set. Because 7 is an outlier, we look back up at our data sets, and we recognize that 15 would be the next lowest value, which is not going to be considered an outlier because that is greater than 10.5. So we are going to draw our lower whisker down to 15 and connect that to the box plot. Note that I drew a dashed line for the lower fence. However, it is common practice to not draw fences in box plots. When looking at our box plots, we recognize the distance from the median down to the left is longer than the distance to the right, and therefore our shape likewise is that it is skewed left. 
the next page will offer a little bit of a summary on box plots and their shape. For typical box plots, if we have what we call a symmetric box plot, then that means that the median is roughly in the center. A reminder that the median is the center line of the box. If we say that it is left skewed, we say that the median is right of the box's center. And the left whisker tends to be longer. If it's right skewed, the median is left of the box's center. And the right whisker is a little bit longer. And when we represent box plots with outliers, we tend to represent the outlier with a dot. If there are outliers present, the whiskers should only extend as far as the next largest or smallest data value that is not an outlier as represented in the previous situation. Here also, we see where fences are relative to the outlier, represented with these blue brackets. And again, note that fences are not normally drawn. We have the minimum Q1, the median, and Q3 are all within the fences, so nothing needs to be adjusted. But we see an outlier on the high end, which would have been our original maximum. Therefore, we have to use the next highest value as our upper whisker. If you have any further questions, be sure to review the example videos or ask your instructor.